and maybe pedaling your feet. Awesome. Shifting your body back towards um, plank. You're just going to move your hands up a little bit and on the inhale you're going to shift your body forward. Maybe gaze up. And then exhale, you're going to send your body back and send your heel back. So that's the flow. Okay. And on your own breath, do four of those. Inhaling, shifting your body forward. Again, if you need to move your hands up a little bit, just so it's more comfortable, please do that. Always listen to your body. If something feels uncomfortable or hurts, don't do it. Exhale, release, bring that back up. Stretching on the opposite side now. Awesome. Sending that heel back. And then on that inhale, shifting your body forward. Exhale, sending your body back and shifting your body back and sending the heel back. Inhale. Shifting your body forward. A couple more times in that flow. And when you're ready, swinging that leg all the way to the side. And making sure your knee is under your hip before moving, walking your hands up. You can bring your hands to your hip for some stability. If you'd like. It's okay. We're made to, you know, fall and get back up. Let's do that again. So rooting now our left foot in the mat, feeling up our right foot. Bringing that right ankle on the right knee. Hitting the bend here. Again, this is just a good hip opener here. Maybe flexing your feet to get some stability as well. Inhale. And to the center. Um, heel toe your feet out just about as wide as the mat. And on your next exhale, bringing your body down. Nice little squat here. Hold just for five, four, three, two, one, and then just lightly bring yourself down to the mat. You got it, you got it, yes. Ah, uh, yes, relaxation. Journaling is simply finding clarity in your life and getting to know yourself. And when you know yourself, that self love, that is healing. No matter whether you're struggling or you want to achieve a big goal, change the world. It's all the same. All the same. It starts with clarity. So now that you know what journaling is, how how do we journal? Super simple. Get a notebook, get an app, and start writing down your thoughts, right? Writing down your feelings. Where you are right now, just describe it. Express yourself. Have a conversation with yourself and just let it flow. There's no wrong or right way to journal. Simply getting to know yourself, having a conversation. So don't, don't think of it like a test. Don't limit yourself, just express. If you can't really just express, there's many journal prompts and questions. You can ask yourself, like, what is your life purpose? Why are you here? What is the biggest block in your life? You can take, that, take down the time to sit with yourself and to ask yourself that question. And that's how you get to know yourself. We don't have to face our fears directly in the world. We face it right now and here. And once we clear that fear, we're unstoppable. So simply just express yourself. That's how you write it. Or that's how you very simple. Now that we know how journaling could help you gain clarity, peace, see where you where head, where you're heading, like now we know how to journal. Let's all start journaling. If you have anything you want to express at the time, or anything you're thinking, anything that's coming up right now, just simply start writing. Good evening, everyone. Thank you again for coming out to the West Indian Social Club. On behalf of the West Indian Social Club, the Board of Directors, the Chair, the Board of Directors, and its members, I want to welcome you as we continue in our series of um, mental health and wellness. Today's topic is seasonal. Seasonal effective, effective disorder 
And the focus will be on food and the choices that we make and how it affects our health, and our, not just physical health, but also mental health. And so uh, tonight, again, as been in the past, our moderator is none other than Dr. Gary Rule. Dr. Gary Rule is MD, MPH, former Director of Health and Human Services for the City of Harvard. He's an author and also a member of the Western Social Club. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Rule as he continues the program as a moderator. Thank you, Claudette, and thank you, everyone. Greetings. I was watching your yoga session. I wish I could be there. It looked really interesting, as well as the instructions on how to journal. Um, just really, really good information, and thank you to the West Indian Social Club. Very briefly, I'm going to introduce Dr. Sean Robotham, who is a chiropractor. So Sean Robotham, D.C., is a chiropractor in Bloomfield, Connecticut and has been in really that healthcare space for over 27 years. He graduated from Palmer College of Chiropractic in 1996. Um, he's well embedded in the community, well known, does a lot of um, interesting healthcare and other things in the community. Uh, the mission of Bloomfield Chiropractic Center, and if you don't know, it's at 11 Mountain Avenue in Bloomfield, Connecticut, is to be a resource center for health, wellness, and education. They strongly believe that basic forms of wellness are God-given rights, and no one will be turned away. The office was the first of its kind in the community, approaching pain reduction, complete health attainment, and full body wellness, and doing so naturally. So just really, really good stuff. Before I turn it over to Dr. Robotham, to remind you, welcome again. He's gonna give you really good information. And part of the things that we always do with these sessions is at the end of his talk, um, I will ask probably one or maybe two questions about something he mentioned in his talk, or maybe from a question that someone in the audience have asked. And the person who can actually respond uh, and get the answer right at the first pass will get a $25 gift certificate to use anywhere of your choice. Hopefully, you're going to choose it to do something that's related to health and wellness. So with no further ado, let's introduce and have Dr. Sean Robotham talk to us about seasonal affective disorder and how some of the things we put in our body, food and our diet, affects that. Dr. Robotham, over to you. Thank you, doctor. Question, is he in Jamaica? <laughs> <laughs> it, it's wishful thinking, journaling, that's what I'd love to be in Jamaica. <laughs> that's what that is. Understood, understood. Good vibes. Yes, yes. Um, I think, uh, first and foremost, uh, if it's okay, I just left a group of men Come to this meeting now as a gun for the guy, what which was preparing for a mental treatment. Sure. Thank you for this uh, opportunity to go right now with your words in regards to the health of the beginning. Um so there's we speak of this. And um, I was more than happy to speak on it. Uh, I'll be honest with you, this is something that I've, I've known about and dealt with personally for many, many years. Um, so it's a problem. Sit down and put some things together for you guys. But first and foremost, I wanted to commend the uh, social club for these types of discussions. So for a space on a Sunday to learn more about health. <laughs> Uh, yoga, the body, the wellness, because we're not doing this nowadays. People are just, unfortunately, wait until they have a symptom, wait until they have consistent pain or reduction in the body function, and then run into a doctor and then deal with something. So this is called uh, a preemptive strike or preemptive action on your part to take your health into your own hands before you have issues. So I really commend you and the social club for doing things like this to support the health. <clears throat> All right. So seasonal affective disorder, um, it's more than just winter blues. So let me start off with a quick general question. Can you raise your hand? You don't have to raise your hand. Anybody here ever 
been diagnosed. Have anybody here ever, ever think they've been depressed? Anyone? So seasonal affective disorder, it's more than just winter blues. Depression is something a lot of people go through. They don't even realize that they're depressed. That's the sad part. Especially living up in this type of, uh, this area, the New England area, we can get to highs and lows and not even realize that we're in a low, okay? So this helps bring a little more uh, concrete order. So seasonal affective disorder, brief definition, I might go into a little more science about it, but as a I like to do that, teach, but then we'll break it down and make it real simple. All right, so seasonal affective disorder, or SAD, is a type of depression. It happens during uh, certain seasons of the year, often fall and winter. You know, and it's thought that shorter days and less daylight can trigger a chemical change in the brain, leading to symptoms of depression. Okay, so focus on that shorter days and uh, fall and winter. So today we're just going to break through the cause, the diagnosis, the treatment. Okay, and then in all of this, we'll see where food ties in. All right, so SAD, seasonal affective disorder, the neurological changes. So this is the things that we can see on the outside, and it also changes on the inside. So on the outside, as people are being uh, displaced with this disorder, we can see fatigue, they become more withdrawn, they become more isolated, the brain fog, the lack of motivation, there's even body weak. So these are things that you see, symptoms that you can see on the outside when this type of depression or disorder starts to take place. Things happening on the inside that you will not see take place is uh, neurotransmitter levels are changing. This is the way chemicals in your brain work. That's changing. Uh, the way you sleep, sleep and wake cycle. So this cycle that your body uh, goes through to fall asleep and wake up, that's going to change. But that's all happening in your brain. But then there's also that circadian rhythm, which is a rhythm of sleep and waking function. So there's, there's a rhythm where we're awake and we're alert. There's another rhythm where we're just calm, peaceful, and then sedated or going to sleep. But these are changes you don't really see, but they're going on. All right, so light is the thing, you know. I don't know if Jesus is light, the power of God is light, but it's light. So the power of light, of being with us or being without it, without light, and the amount of it will change a lot of things. As the seasons change, the amount of light exposure we get also changes, right? Right. Um, our bodies are like plants, and we need light to function efficiently. I don't know if any of you, I'm a, I'm a, I always tell my kids, I tell people, don't look around and look down. You just know? <laughs> You know, I, I look up. I look up at the sky. I walk my dog. I always look at the sky. So I can tell you, you can almost tell what month is, where the stars are. Because it changes. This, things are happening. Look up. So look up. So when you look up, um, there's more sun, but just just look up. Because if, if you're looking up, guess what? Has anyone noticed that the sun is staying up longer? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And are you feeling a little better about it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? I, I mean, because before, what, about a month or so ago, it was just. Four o'clock still dark, dark, you know, it's dark at four o'clock. Okay, so these are little things that happen, so look up. Um, melatonin, okay, not melanin. Melanin is what makes the skin dark. This is melatonin, all right? It's a natural product found in plants and mammals. It's primarily known as, it's primarily known in animals as a hormone released by the pineal gland um, in the brain at night. It has been associated with the control of your sleep-wake cycle. Okay, so there's a gland in your brain it's pushing out this melatonin that's controlling how much the sleep wake cycle. And that's going to change with the light exposure. Okay? We are photo period sensitive. Okay, let me stop there. I just need to bold print Photo period sensitive um, means that we change. We're, we're sensitive to the amount of light we're exposed to. Photo being light, period, not the amount. So the amount of light we're exposed to will change on how we react or how we function. Okay? And with that, the melatonin secretions in mammals or ourselves is suppressed, is suppressed by light. This is discovered by Mr. Seltzer, reported for the first time that human melatonin secretions can be suppressed or reduced by light exposure. Okay? More light, less melatonin. Okay, we're going to tie it together. So, decreased light, decreased light, increased melatonin. Okay? Less exposure to daylight. Okay, during the winter months, September through March. Also, working night shifts and, the, and um, sleeping during the day, those things kind of mess with your light exposure. And also, less time spent out of door messes with your light exposure. So, these things are going to affect us as those photo period sensitive human beings. So, increased melatonin is going to happen. You'll see that in hypersomnia. So, that's like it's an insomnia. This is now, I can't I sleep too much. I can't fall asleep. That's insomnia now. Hypersomnia that I, I 
kept sleeping too much. All right? Increased appetite. As that melatonin goes up, I'm getting up hungrier, and I'm also craving the carbs. That's what I have in there. Increased appetite, the weight gain, the carbohydrate craving, and then um, hyperuria, which is chronic lethargy, which is always tired. Okay? Right, we're gonna we're gonna focus a little bit more on that weight gain and that carbohydrate craving. All right. Uh, so the SAT first described by Dr. Rosenthal, 84, characterized by the onset of reoccurring depression during autumn and winter, the spontaneous, I like that word, spontaneous remission in the spring and summer. So like, again, yeah, we start to see that the, the, the sun is staying up longer, we start to feel a little happy, okay? So three to five percent of the, the country suffers with it, and change sex, age, and altitude. So it's more so women in the, more so women than men, um, 40 is enough. I think everybody has a touch of it. Um, age, like I said, 40 or up. I think even younger people can be affected by it. And latitude, meaning where we're located. So I don't think if the doc was in Jamaica, he's having a lot of seasonal affective disorder. <laughs> or to us, and anybody up in Alaska, where you have all these, you know, where they have that whole 24 hours of darkness for a period of time, and then they have 24 hours of light. But those guys go through a lot of this, you know, as you go further and more. So, so, a quick review. So, exposure to less sunlight in the winter months or by any other means, like poor night shift adaptation, uh, results in increased melatonin secretion from that penile gland. And that causes a lethargy or the hypersomnia, uh, uh, which is the sleep alone, the fatigue, and the increased appetite for the carbohydrates. I got nice picture there of all that stuff. I just think that. We go there, especially in this winter much, to those comfort, right? Find ourselves just craving stuff, sweets, sweets. Wanna come on, bring it. Pizza, macaroni, cheese, <laughs> cheese. Right. bread, bread, bread. What you got there? You know, it's healthy. You know, good stuff. You know? but it's all, but more so in these winter dark months. So, what's the sun doing for our bodies? And I had all the, the chemical work down. I'm not even going to explore that one. Basically, that skin absorbs that light. And right off the bat, it starts to break it into um, chemicals in the liver and it starts to create D, the vitamin D, and then from there, the vitamin D3. You've heard how important vitamin D3 now is that everyone deficient in it. And of course, I would assume that most people that have a higher deficiency in that D3 that are up in these areas with that whole seed, you know, when it's darker. So that's why in those months, I'm going to say, it wouldn't it be best that in those months, um, September through March, when it's darker, that we should make sure that we intentionally increase our vitamin D, the vitamin D3 intake to help um, facilitate the production of that melatonin in the body. All right? So that's just something to think about. But again, the benefits of sunlight is, of course, having that vitamin D, getting that in there. And again, but I'm going to go into it, just that just, if, you, if it's, even if it's sunny and it's 30 degrees outside, which sucks, even if you could just get out there for 10 minutes and just like, you know, <laughs> it, it really makes a difference. It really makes a difference. You can do it through the window, but sometimes the window, the glass absorbs certain UV rays that we need, but even through the window, but when you feel that, it would definitely make a difference. Like the other day, it was 20 minutes, it was just sitting in the backyard, it was, we had a, one of those crazy 40, 50 degree days. And I got 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and the whole day had changed after that. You know, very powerful stuff. So that's sunlight that's going to help us with our sleep. It's going to help us um, with our brain function. It's going to help with a lot of different things with being exposed to uh, sunlight. Uh, so again, so again, summing it up again, less sun means more melatonin. More melatonin in that body is going to make you crave more carbs, get more tired, gain more weight, yeah, more depression, and just continue, continue to repeat the cycle. Okay? That, with that weight gain, depression, and, and also people forget um, when we eat these foods, it's a high and a low. So as I'm eating my hot dog, I'm eating my pizza, and my cheese, my rice, my dumpling, I'm feeling good, it's going down. But as soon as it breaks down my body, I'm going to usually crash lower than I was before I ate. And that's where that gets into that bad cycle, that depressive cycle. Um, but then when we eat these foods, because cheese, they even had a study where cheese, they said, they were looking at the chemical uh, activity, how, cheese, how the body responds to cheese, and cheese and cocaine were running right at the same level. Yeah. 
Yeah. So sit there, get you, you get high when you eat shit. Yeah, I don't get high when you eat I mean, you're not stoned like us, but there's a certain high. Why, why do you think it sounds so good, right? Why do you want to put it on everything, right? You get, there's, there's, a, there's a chemical a frame response to cheese and those type of fats that is almost equivalent to the same brain response, not the same biochemical response, the brain response to cocaine. Because they want pretty high cheese. You know, and then, but see, with every high comes a, a lump. That's why you know you gotta watch so that you eat that cheese and then you know you buy that. <laughs> oh, oh, you know, so we're gonna to talk about balance. So today we're gonna to talk about effectively addressing this SAP through phototherapy, proper nutritional changes, through supplementation and medicinal applications, and exercise. Okay, so there's some ways, four ways you can just drag this out and take care of this, address this. Um, so studies have shown phototherapy, meaning light therapy or exposure to light. Um, studies have shown that exposure to UVB light for two to three hours per day um, has had appreciable results in reducing the symptoms associated with SAD. All right? And uh, for its photo period, the circadian rhythm we talked about, best response to exposure to light between 6 a.m. and 9 a.m. at night and the morning. So again, if you have, are diagnosed with this, you want to get in front of that lamp and uh, for those three hours a day. So Okay, but well, I'm gonna jump in off with what I did. See, I knew it was bad. I can't stand it. Like these months was gonna be crazy. As soon as fall comes, I start bumming out. So I literally, you see that everyone ever see those growers that the, the water growers uh, grow your plants in your house mm -hmm. you with the lights. Yeah. So I put one. Someone asked me to put one in my office. I put it in my office. Now it will never be in my office. It is on all the time because those lights is they're making the plants grow, but they bring so much energy into the office that I can never turn it off. <laughs> You know, it's, it's, it's the light is very powerful stuff. So I'm getting exposed to my UV, um, you know, for eight hours a day. It's awesome, you know. And I notice that when it goes out, I'm like, you know. So I would, you know, we're going to talk about how you can get that stuff into your world. Just sitting in a certain room, having a certain light bulb. When you do your work and when you do your studies or whatever, you just have this certain light bulb there because you're always going to be there, you know. The proper nutritional change is so reducing the intakes of the heavy fats and sugars. Now you hear this all the time, but now you see there's a, 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 a neurological and emotional component to eating this food that's also going to be compounded with the, um, the time of year. Okay? So at a certain time of year, we really want to stay away from these heavy fats and sugar. Okay? We want to start eating more nutrient, nutrient dense foods like the berries, the avocados, the lean organic meats. Seeds, raw, raw nuts, and the gap, asparagus and broccoli. So you want to get your vegetables in there. Um, you want to get your lean organic meats. Uh, I say organic, a lot of people well, that's funny, but it's, it's just that you want it to be clean. You know, there's a lot of stuff. I just did a detox uh, with some patients who put down meat for like a month. So no meat, no bread, no dairy, no cheese, no rice, no pasta, no chips, no alcohol, no caffeine for a month. And I tell you, the whole body changes. It, um, and uh, when you go back to meat, you feel a certain way. So we don't want to keep it lean and organic, nice and clean. Eating smaller portions of meat frequently, oh, sorry, it's not about meat. Eating smaller portions or frequently and preparing your food yourself. So if we're nibbling, I'm going to nibble. I think nibbling is good, great, because it's going to keep your blood sugar steady. So you're not going to have that cheese high, that cheese crash. You know, it's going to be right here. So you're going to nibble. So you get your foods that you like, your healthy foods you like, and keep them around. You, so that you can reach and your belly is never rumbling and rumbling, and that's good. So that's going to keep you just straight line. All right, and that's also going to help balance out weight, and it also can participate in weight reduction in a natural way if you have good snacks around all the time. And when you eat, I don't need to fill up the whole plate. I always say a handful of right here, the whole plate, I like a full handful of different portions of it. But well, you don't have to because you're going to eat again. You're gonna stick pump yourself, you're gonna eat again in another three to four hours. That's great. So you don't have to fill it up, fill it up, especially on some of the carbohydrates like the rice and the pastas, which gonna which gonna stick. That's the thing, which are gonna stick. Um, prepare your own food yourself. How many people here prepare their own food? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Seven. <laughs> uh what's your favorite dish you like to prepare? Two, man. <laughs> <laughs> we 
looking for pear? I really like just spinach. Spinach. Right. With garlic and some red onions. Okay. And I say prepare your own food because you, right off the bat, it's a vegetable. Right off the bat, it's the spinach. You have an intimate connection with what you're doing. It becomes personal. It becomes something you kind of look forward to. You don't feel bad when I made this spinach. Oh, <laughs> no, you feel, you feel good, especially if it's something healthy. So get that intimate relationship with making your own food, one. Two, um, if you're not, that means you're picking up something fast. And something fast means it has colors in it. It's got the chemicals in it. It's got the additives in it. And all those particular byproducts um, can increase depressive symptoms or actually increase anxiety because some of them have a way of they also stimulants. You know, a lot of the colors just set us off. We don't even know it. These food colorings or these additives set us off. We don't even know it. That's why when I did the detox with the patients, I mean, some people went back to old, old foods. They felt really weird. One lady reported, one patient reported having one Ritz cracker and having a headache and feeling anxious. One Ritz cracker. Because her body was so clean after that one month period of not eating all of that stuff that she could feel the true way those foods were working on her body. You know? And we don't even realize that because we're taking it so much so often that we don't really know how that affects you. But I can easily tell you after that detox, I had a, a half a can of ginger ale. I felt like I was drunk because there was so much sugar in it. I guess it was the sugar that I had, had it. so much sugar. In it, I was just, oh, I, just <laughs> I was woozy, you know, couldn't stand up, just like uh, I need to lay down. And that was a half a can of just ginger ale, you know. But if you think about it, that's 16 grams of sugar in one can. So it's, it's all the um, So again, your rice, your breads, your cheese, your pasta, keep them at a minimum because that just reduces the crash. Remember. Those foods are going to get us up, but there's going to be a crash with that. And also, if we're not moving and shaking, they're going to stick instead. Those foods are going to stick. You're going to find them on the back of those arms. You're going to find them around the belly and the waist. So I like to keep them to a minimum um, so, so I don't have to crash one and so they don't stick and stay. So I'm not going to be exercising or being active. So your supplements and your medicinal applications. So we talked about the D3 vitamins. So our supplemental and medicinal applications. When we talk about supplements, D3, you take up to 5,000 uh, micro units a day. Keep that coming, especially think about doing that during these winter darker months. If you're not taking it, definitely add it to Add it to your diet. Add it to what you're doing. Take that, get that. Yeah. Ashwanda, that's the new, it's not even new, it's old, but everyone's jumping on it because it's working. Ashwanda should be in your life. Um, it's really good for, for uh, stimulate adrenal function. And remember, adrenals is what gets us up, keeps gets us out of those depressive states, gives us our energy. And also, with adrenal going up and that function is going to have that stress reduction and that feeling of well being. So, Ashwanda, you guys have heard of it, right? Yeah, a lot of people are so self contained, you know. Um, support the omega 3, 6, and 9 essential fatty acids and fish oils, get them in your life. Good for everything that information, but also a lot of chemical processes in the body. Now, I, I, I get down on Walgreens and CBS because they'll sell a lot of this stuff dirt cheap. Just remember, guys, if it's cheap, it's cheap. <laughs> All right? So when I get three bottles for a dollar at CBS, what am I really getting? So sometimes you're going to have to pay quality. And also, CBS, I think CBS, GNC, and maybe Walgreens or somebody else, they got called out by the FDA because they were putting fillers in their stuff, in their supplements. Okay, so they weren't playing by the rules. That was some years ago. Um, so yeah, you want to make sure you get those essential fatty acids and those fish oils because they say they'll say one thing and then they'll say fish oils. So they're two different things, fish oils. And I think sometimes the CVS fish oils, whatever's left of the fish, they ground up and spit into the acid. You know, most of somebody with a quality product. The folate, magnesium. Again, these are good, good uh, uh, nutrients uh, for chemical function. Okay. As well as the B vitamins, you've heard about taking your B vitamins in. So it's going to be for your energy and your metabolism. Okay, so you don't have this stuff in your body, you know, on your countertop, take it. A lot of people want, but why I'm taking all this stuff off? This is not drugs, right? this is food. Now you can get this in your food, that, that, you know, we're going to talk about that and those different vegetables and so forth. But sometimes the food that we're getting, we have to eat more of it because it's been so uh, depleted of its nutrients process too. So sometimes that's why supplementation has come into 
to the marketplace. So use it. And I'll use it. As a chiropractor, I'm going to say get, get adjusted chiropractic. Why? Because I'm not just a pain management guy. When a, when a chiropractor adjusts someone's spine, I'm allowing your brain to talk better to the rest of your body so you function better. So now that your hormone production is a lot more efficient when there's less stress on your neurological system. That's what I've been doing for the last 25 years plus. So getting adjusted um, and just clearing out that spine and that neurological system is really important. <coughs> really, really important. And then from the medical standpoint, there's, a, there's drugs called SSRIs. And those are special serotonin reuptake inhibitors. So serotonin is what gets us up. It keeps us up. It keeps us, you know, having, be, having the energy and so forth. So these drugs keep that in your body longer so, that you, so you're, it doesn't get uptaken into the bloodstream. So it stays out circulating longer. Again, it's kind of a cheat because we don't want to have to take a drug like that. But it can help you if you're in depression and you need a, help, a little extra help because the other things don't work. But I always say go natural first. And if that's not working, then you can move to the medicinal aspect. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Exercise. Okay, you guys know that's all I'm about the exercise. Right? <laughs> The last we build and what is home today, I'll give you my cards. But yeah, exercise is, you know, every day if you're in the gym or you just take that 30 minutes out for yourself, you're adding literally hours to your life. All right. But as far as reducing the symptoms of depression and SAD, exercise is it. With the nutrition, it's you just can't be sad when you're taking this time out to do something healthy for yourself. You know, uh, for me, it's literally it's just therapeutic. Uh, Increasing your heart rate 30 minutes, three times a week, that's exercise. So I tell my people, anybody, everybody's in this room, you can literally put on your favorite song, vodka and wine, whatever you gotta do, <laughs> 30 minutes. By yourself, nobody gotta see what you're doing. But here's the thing, I want you to sweat. If you're not sweating, then you ain't work. I want you to work, nobody needs to see it, it doesn't have to be pretty, but you have to get it in, and you have. And if you're a little winded, that's good. That's good. That, that, you know, working, you can work your way up to the 30 minutes, maybe just 15. But I want you to, you know, start somewhere, pump it up, make it have enjoyment with it, but get it done. Because those three days a week, you're gonna probably your body's gonna want four after a while. And the beautiful thing, here's a here's, so here's a challenge: three days a week for 30 minutes, just find that music, whatever you know. You don't can't get to a gym or a personal trainer. Three days a week, 30 minutes, um, and try to do that for 30 days, all right? I trust you. If you stop doing that after th day 31, your body's going to look for it, and that's what you want. I, I always try to get my people addicted to exercise because there's a certain threshold you cross where your body is looking for that, and that's what you want, okay? So that's a challenge right there. And again, what you guys did today, the yoga, Zumba, Pilates class, that group stuff, Okay, when you do the group stuff, socialization reduces depression, right? Because isolation is the number one thing about depression. So we don't want to be isolated. So we're going to get into a group class, especially in those colder, darker months. Um, and also, we're going to get moved. So the group class, I, I highly recommend Zoom with the Pilates, yoga, participate, be around people, and then continue to train the cooking and the, the, the well. Cool. So, go again. Dr. Robotham, uh, I'm at Bluefield Chiropractic Center. He said 11 Mountain Avenue. It's actually 37 Jerome Avenue, but I'll get that information to you. Um, the Laxon Build is another location that I have also in Bloomfield, but it's located in Club Fitness, which is a gym. So now, you know, I'm going to give you guys all cards, contact, and because I want you guys to get it. And if you go on the website, you get a free one-on-one uh, -on -one consultation with me. I want you to take me up on it. Me be in this place, me be in this gym, come on through, we'll schedule it. We don't have to work out and talk, talk about chiropractic, talk about health, talk about nutrition, take a walk around the gym, look at the stuff, dream if we want, you know, and then leave. But at least you can't say someone didn't offer you the opportunity to make a change. That is going to cost you nothing. See, my God takes care of all that. So just to give you the opportunity to say that no hurdle except you. Okay, so I guess I'm going to keep the card. There's a QR code on it, or you can go to relaxrebuild.net, schedule an appointment with me, we'll meet up, we'll talk chiropractic, we'll whatever you want with that, and we'll go from there. On that note, I'm going to get to the doc and listen to questions. Oh, he's going to ask questions.
I'm going to ask anybody questions? questions? Come on. I have a couple of questions. Ashwanda, yep. why is that exactly? Ashwanda, so it's a natural herb. Okay. Yep. Um, mentioned chiropractic, chiropractic as a chiropractic as a medical practice. Yes. Um, which I guess is sort of mandatory that you could go with that. Yeah, so basically, when we live life, and we call it, so we're, as an organism, we stand up. So we're bipedal. We don't walk on all fours, quadrupeds, we're bipedal. And then doing that, we put a lot of stress on this spinal column. Bending, standing, pushing, pulling. How many times have you backed up your car? Turning, twisting, grocery, digging holes, whatever we do, gardening, shoveling stuff. All that stuff puts stress on our spine and our joints, but more so on our spine. Okay? What will happen is that spine will shift, twist, and misalign. We gotta remember that spine houses your spinal column. Any women in there ever had an epidural? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it sucks, I guess. But that's what they're doing. They're putting an injection of drug into the spinal cord, going through your spinal column of bone to numb you out. That's how powerful their spinal cord and all those nerves are. So what's a, uh, an adjustment is of finding out where there's a, a minor irritation to a nerve that controls your legs or your bladder or your heart or your lungs. But there's a, there's a small irritation to that same nerve. <clears throat> And I just chiropractor will find out where that shifting is in the spinal column. And with my hands, usually, or maybe showing you a stretch or whatever, adjust and get that pressure off of that nerve. So now that brain can communicate, communicate better with that organ or that body part. And that usually results in reduction of pain, swelling, numbness, tingling. And if it's a, a, a nerve that goes to the lungs, it's actually increased lung function. Uh, I get a lot of people coming to me. So your lower back nerves, your lumbar nerves, they control not only pain in your legs and everything else, sciatica, you hear about this stuff, but it also controls the digestive system. So I have people come in to me and say, Doc, listen, I came into you in my low back, which is feeling a little bit better. But lately, I've been more regular than I've ever been in my life. Why is that? Because the same nerve that transmits that lower back pain also controls your colon. Okay? So the adjustment is a powerful thing, um, and it's hands on the other that's right. Answer good. Thank you. We'll take the lady first. What's your handle, baby? Nope. Boss man. You take too much action on the right thing that can be seen today. You know, I was reading up on it. Uh, they did say maybe, but it would start to hit when you receive too much with diarrhea, um, stomach uh, pain, and stuff like that if you take it too much. But so I think the recommended dose was like 500 milligrams a day. Sir. What does it do? Um, Ashwanda, what about it? What does it do? Well, like we said, it's going to um, reduce stress, overall feeling well being, but it also boosts adrenal function. So you know, it will it help you sleep? Well, no, it's going to help reduce the depressive symptoms. So that feeling of well being, getting those adrenals pumping again, um, and also antioxidants, so you know, bringing out a lot of chemicals and dirt in your body. So, but it's, it's really good and natural. So you can take it in the morning? Yeah, I would take it in the morning. You know, definitely something if you're not taking it, please do a trial. So I've never heard any negative results on it. It's a big change. Big change, especially energy. Now, I take it um, consistent, not consistently, but I take it and it changes everything. I forget to take it sometimes. Oh, and I want to say one last point. Yes, seasonal affective has, seasonal affective disorder has affected me significantly over the years since the beginning. To the point where, and I have four daughters, but my most recent, and she's one years old, her name is Summer. Uh, so I named her <laughs> Summer just so that every time, especially during the winter, when I call her Summer, come here. <laughs> it's like, ah. <laughs> it's not working yet. She's tearing up the house. That is the one reason why I named her child Summer. Because okay. I just cannot deal with all of this winter cold, gray, Whatever. I have a question. question. What are your thoughts on black seed oil? Black seed oil. You know what? I definitely recommend it. I can't tell you exactly why, but I know as an antioxidant, what I gather, it's quite powerful stuff. So, yes. But I couldn't tell you the exact dosage and the, the, the means of using it, but I, I would say to read up on it and probably get into your life. Because there's so much stuff out there we can take, guys. You know? So, I would not... Been against it, I would just say read up on it and most likely get it into your life. 
I had on my edit to my countertop at least 20, 30 different supplements that I work in there and also into my children, you know, because we want to stay ahead of the curve and keep our keep the the oxidants, the the the, the, the dirt in our body and our blood cells down to low level. Question. So you talked about like especially a lot like CVS, Walgreens. Are any local mom and pop stores that you would recommend to go to support and purchase yep. the product? Everybody know limbs? Yeah. Everybody know limbs. Yep. So you go in there and you say, Anna, <laughs> Dr. Obama sent me. That's all you gotta say. You got a discount? Yeah. <laughs> she smiled. She smiled. <laughs> Definitely will smile. <laughs> but um, yeah, limbs. Limbs are big, you know, they're local, they do it. From there, Unfortunately, Whole Foods, I mean, they're, little, they're pricey, but they're going to have everything you need. But sometimes, like I said, you want cheap to get cheap. So you, those two places, it may not be as cheap as you want it, but you're going to get quality. And what's good with what's good, what's good with both places, someone's going to be there to have, further explain the product to you. Hannah's going to do it. Bob's going to do it at the limbs. And Whole Foods usually keeps somebody in that aisle. It's an investment. You need to realize. Oh, yeah. That's it. Thank you. Exactly. Yeah. It's an investment in your in ourselves. Yep. So if we're willing to purchase and pay for all these other things, why should we be willing to pay for ourselves? Uh, is, what, what is it? Sooner or later. Yep. Sooner or later. I've had, I've had patients come into my office who will line up a dozen different medications on, on the countertop to take a picture of it. So sooner or later, either you invest in this now through the supplementation and spending whatever money on the on the vitamin, which is minimal, on the proper nutritious food, which is minimal, or you pay down the road in the doctor visits, in the medications, in the surgeries. Okay, but you're going to pay. You're going to pay. Trust me on that. And I'm adamant about that because I watch it happen all the time. You know, and, and one thing that always gets me, I don't know why it's popping in my head now. I watch a lot of my CNAs and RNs work for people. Those are God's angels, and they don't take care of themselves. And now I retire with this big, beautiful pension 30 years later, but I got to get a hip surgery. I can get my knees done. I get my shoulder done. I don't know what's going on with my liver. Okay. So you're going to pay sooner or later. Don't, don't put yourself on the back burner. You know, I can't take care of other people unless I take care of myself first. Right. What's that old thing? The oxygen comes down, you put yourself on you first and then the kids. Mm -hmm. Right. Anything else? We're good. Well, one more. You said that dad is different than seasonal blues. Because I get the seasonal blues. Seasonal blues? No. Um, I get that. Like, by say, October or something like that. I'm depressed. So, what I think now is I close on my time. So, I don't see the darkness. Okay. Okay. And I feel better now with that. Right. So, what's the difference? The they, they're all the same. Some people just think it's blues, but no, it's actually, it is a mild form of some form of depression, depression, but just a little bit down, you know? Now, some guys want to grade depression. Now, now, am I, can I leave this place? Is it really ruining my life? Now that we have a different level of depression, but we're just a little bit down because of that seasonal change and that less light exposure. Don't forget what's going on here. It's not like you're losing your mind. It's that your body is having less of a nutrient that it needs, which is light. Okay? Which is light. And because we're having less of that light, another hormone is building up in our body, which is the melatonin, which is now kicking off another battery of other things in my body, which is making me, well, I'm so sad. I want to eat this and I want to do that. Yep. Uh, what's the difference between uh, vitamin D and vitamin D3? Yeah. Should I take both? Uh, I would... If you could get the blood assay and see which one you're most deficient in, that's a great place to start. But I'd probably go with D3 because that one's a little more richer and we're more, usually more de uh, deficient in that one. Or D, D either way. But yeah, you really good. As long as the product is good, it's just a chem it's a chemical change in the D3 is uh, significant. Yep. Is there a particular light uh, brand of that? UVB. Yeah, you, me, me. Yeah, so it's me. Yeah. Question. Do you, do you um, create vitamin D on the skin? Yeah. Yeah, that's the one that you're getting from the sun as well. Oh, yeah. So it helps them with that whole process. But again, I don't even know what that LED is coming in. You know, that's probably the one that's on my plants. Yeah. 
So yeah, that's the one to get. But I just something tells me just getting exposed to that good white light is going to help make a difference anyway. You know, but it's the UVB is what you need to do. Yeah. Me personally, I, no whole milk. <laughs> no. <laughs> so check, no, check it out. We're the only animal on this planet that once we're weaned from our mothers, we go find another animal to get milk from them. Hmm. Why is that? That's kind of sick, isn't it? <laughs> so when someone says they're lactose intolerant, so that's good. You're supposed to be. <laughs> okay? We're not so our bodies were designed to continue to take in this milk, but especially for another animal. Okay. So I'm a nut, I do you know almond milk, coconut milk, all those other milks. Um because it just what comes to the whole milk is so much more stuff, you know. Um, yeah, some people can't leave it, so they want to go with the grass fed, the organic stuff. But if you can transition into the almond milk, coconut milk, go there. It's so much better for you. Like again, it's still milk, and now it's processed in some kind of way, you know. But if again, if you try the other stuff first, and that works for you, then go there. But the whole milk, leave it alone. If I person right now personally, if I have a glass of whole milk, I will get an asthma attack in about 20 minutes. It's inflammatory. It's inflammatory. A lot of people are suffering. They don't know why. Why is my kid got asthma? Why are they always mucusy? It's the milk. I first thing you ask me, what you feed them? Well, you know, we have milk with the cereals and whole milk should just I know I'm killing it, but that was the biggest lie they taught us back in the day. Milk is making the body good. No one. Sorry. You know, maybe at a certain a certain point, but nah, you can do so much better. Mm -hmm. Probably so, no, the only person hurt me, but you can do so much better. Yeah. I have a question. Question. Can I come back to the other one? No. Nope. No, I was going to ask about oil, but I think she asked this question. Yeah. And if you'll recommend oil. Oh, 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 yeah. Anything else? Anything else out of that cow? cow? <laughs> anything away from that cow? Because I mean, if you saw how they processed it, you'd be like, oh no, you know. But it's just so. You know, it's you know, just so much that comes with it, and so much that's not processed through it. You know, all me, I might recommend if you have your own cow and raise them, even that just you know, let's just do the oat milk, it's easy on the body, it's a little more nutritious. Knock up the okay. I've heard that raw protein, yeah, it's actually much healthier than you process it. Okay, the cow's milk, okay. Uh, the processed cow's milk actually makes it not raw protein. You say that healthy. You know, I've never went down the goat milk road before, so I can't really speak to it. So I would have to tell people to, you know, do trial and error on that one to see how your body responds to it. Because another thing, too, when it comes to anything that we're discussing when it comes to nutrients, is gut health. Okay? So how is that whole milk going to affect my gut? Is it better for my gut or worse for my gut? Is that raw, is that gold milk better for my gut or worse for my gut? Because if it's worse for my gut, then it's causing more problems. And that's what we don't want. So that's probably one of the biggest facts of staying away from the whole, the whole milk is that gut fact. Because a healthy gut is health. Okay? Because that's just that's just that's your second brain is your gut. Yeah, I heard, I read somewhere that they're considering vitamin D three to be a hormone. Did you hear that? No. As far as who's that vitamin? A medical, um, yeah, it's so a medical thing that vitamin D is so important to the body that they consider it to be a hormone. Right, well, it's definitely vital. It's definitely vital in that whole in the whole chemical change. Definitely vital. Vital D three, she's saying, is vital as far as because like, remember a lot of this stuff like the ashwagandha and a lot of other supplements we've known about it. Caribbeans have known about it. They have all their little all this stuff with your moms bring us up. Now it hits the marketplace. So much just marketed that. Oh, my mom, you know, so you know, go back to I always say go back to basics. Question um, Yep, yep. So, what we did in that detox was berries only. It, it was I can't have banana, my banana, but no, you can't have your banana, or you can have <laughs> one banana at the beginning of the day, but just stay away from the bananas. Unless they're, uh, believe it or not, unless they're still green, then it can happen. But outside of that, just stay with the bananas. But wow. we say the very low. Huh? Wow. This is sugar content. Now, once it starts to change, it gets just more sugar content. Um, but the berries are the best place to go. Anything tart is the best way to go. When it comes to the uh, fruit, 
Um, Very quickly, thank you, Dr. Robotham, for that really interesting and informative um, session. I'll ask my last my question before I turn it over to Claudette. Wow, there's just so much information that you shared that was really, really good. Um, and I'm going to make it a little bit hard, I think, for the first person to answer this question. Dr. Robotha mentioned a gland in which melatonin, not melanin, melatonin is made. What is that gland called? Pineal. Well, I'll give it to you, definitely. That young lady, one, pineal, P-I-N-E-A-L. Excellent, you, you got it. <laughs> so you got the $25 gift certificate, thank you. Um, again, thank you, Dr. Robotham. Thank you, Claudette. I'm going to turn it over to you. Uh, the young lady will give you her particulars, and then you can get her the gift card. Thank All you. Right. And have a great evening. Thank you, Dr. Robotham. Good night. All right. Good night. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye.